And looking back on it, what they would do is as someone else would come in and try to buy that station, they would, uh, it was really like a shell game. They'd sell it and they couldn't make it and they'd keep all the down payment and resell it again and resell it again. So it really wasn't done in the good faith of it because they had really had a clamp on it and a clamp on everybody was related. They owned the car dealerships, they owned this and that. So <clears throat> some of the stuff they were doing to me was really diabolical. They would hide the tapes. They would, uh, in radio, you're selling airtime, so it's not like shoes and you can count how many you had when you left. I mean, it was like they would take cash for, a, for a somebody's schedule and then they wouldn't turn the money in. And here I was laid up, had no way to, to pay, and I'm going more and more into debt with this thing. And I said, and I went to Father Francis, and I said, Father, what they're doing is diabolical. And I said, if I don't pull out of this thing, I had filed chapter um, 11, and I was trying to, um, pull out of this thing. They had given me a certain time. I said, if I don't do this, I said, I'm so close, but every time I get this, this close to making it, something really evil happens. He said, well, when are you going back up there? I said, well, I'm going up probably Monday. It came in on a Friday from New Orleans. It's about a two and a half hour ride. He said, well, you stop in here Monday and I'll have something for you. And I thought, oh, great. What's it going to be? Some money or something? That's great. <laughs> That's great, you know. <clears throat> so he comes in, and so the whole weekend I had a marvelous weekend. I had this weight lifted off of me and thinking, oh, this is wonderful. He's got the answer. Isn't this wonderful? Man, I could pray the rosary. Oh, I was wonderful. So next mor the, that Monday morning I get up, and I drive up, and I see Father Francis. And Father, like I told you, he's bumbling little priest. And he says, what are you doing here? I said, what do you mean, what am I doing here? Remember, I, I'm coming up and remember what I told you and about all the evil things that are going on at the station. And really, there was two people that were really, it was the bookkeeper and the program director that were really kind of doing me in. And I said, don't you remember me? I told you about all the stuff and the stuff that was going on and everything, and you said you had something for me that would help me out? He, oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So his desk is all piled up with all this stuff, and he starts looking all around, and he starts digging around, and all of a sudden, he pulls out this little metal. Do you have any idea how many medals I have? I looked at that medal and I said, this is it? This is what you have for me? Oh, he said, that's just not any medal. He said, that's a St. Benedict medal. I said, yeah? He said, yes. He said, this is the medal that they use in exorcism. And he says, you quietly go put this somewhere in your radio station. And he said, it will either remove you from the evil or the evil from you. Very simply, but very sincerely go, place this somewhere in your radio station. I thought, well, what do I got to lose? So I'm driving up there, I said, I can't believe the whole weekend and it gives me a medal, you know. <laughs> so I have one more guy, right, that's giving me trouble. So I take that medal and I say, St. Ben, <laughs> I know you did this. But one more time. <laughs> if you could do this one more time, I know it's really, 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 really you. So I ran upstairs to his office, and there was a speaker where we could put the, um, you know, where the, they would hear the station playing back, where we would play back the station. And I got up on a chair and I set it up on top of that speaker. Jenny, was it like two weeks or it wasn't even two weeks, huh? It was two weeks. It was two weeks. We go back. She's with me this time. And when we walk in, here comes the guy down the steps. And he says, did you bring my check? I said, well, and now you'd have to understand something. First of all, I should tell you this. This guy, just to aggravate me, every time I went up there, he'd be sitting there playing solitaire. He wouldn't even try to hide the cards when I'd go in the office. He just said that. And I'd say, um, Phil, do you think you could put this here? Do you think you could do it? Nah, we could try, we could try. You know, it's just slow, slow, and here's this, that, and I said, oh. So well, this time when I come in, he says, did you bring my check? And I said, well, why would I bring your check? If this is like on a Wednesday or something. He said, well, I called the New Orleans office, which is where my aunt is, which is the accountant, and he says, and I left a message for you to bring a check. And I said, well, no, I didn't, but he says, well, didn't you get my message? I quit. Then you do? <laughs> you really do? I know things haven't been easy. I know this and this. But let me just ask you, why now? Why right now do you feel that you're going to quit? 
He said, too much stress. <laughs> <laughs> he must have lost playing solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> and one night, as true as I'm telling you, I coming up to the door, look outside, and here comes a duck. Now, I'm not talking about a white duck. I'm talking like a mallard duck, a female mallard. And this is how it's coming up her walk. A duck, and it's coming up her walk. So we open the door, and the duck comes in. And we're like, where did this duck come from? And it's like a wild duck. And it comes in, and everybody can't say anything, but I say, look at the duck. So somebody says, get them ducks, because, you know, they'll cut loose, you know? They're messy, you know? Them ducks need ammonium AD or something. It just kept saying, I'm like, meh, meh, So it walked all around. We let it go through the kitchen. We let it go up. And then just starts, here's some steps to go up to my aunt. So it goes, and it jumps a step, jumps a step went down the hall, finds my aunt's room, and flew up on a bed. May I never walk out of this shrine. Everybody was so stunned. My aunt's laying there so sick, and she goes, whose duck is that? Where did that duck come from? Get that duck! And the duck just settled down and laid on the bed.